the irony is that Maxine Waters and other leftists uh, are always talking about defunding the police. They're um, like largely against the Second Amendment, but they benefit from this armed security and expert security um, provided by federal law enforcement. It's again, it's rules for thee and not for me when you're a member of Congress. Uh, we have another big story uh, that we put out this week through our Corruption Chronicles blog. And I've, I encourage you to go to our website regularly to look at our various blogs. We have the Corruption Chronicles blog, we have our investigative bulletin, and we have our other blogs, our deep dives and such like that. Uh, so we uh, talk about all the things we're finding uh, beyond our lawsuits often. And in this case, we had um, uh, information that we reported on about Maxine Waters. You may recall she went out to Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, where she incited violence and intimidated a jury uh, in the Chauvin trial. And we filed an ethics complaint about that. Well, the v there's, uh, it turned out that she had special security on her flight to Minneapolis. Minneapolis, excuse me. Uh, the federal air marshals were yanked from a high-risk flight so Congressman Waters could have extra security during that trip. Though she was already covered by four, four people, four man detail, consisting of two Capitol Hill police officers and two Secret Service agents, according to multiple law enforcement sources interviewed by Judicial Watch. The veteran federal air marshal sources say the California Democrat had two air marshals reassigned to a plane that would otherwise not qualify because it was not considerable, considered high risk. The union represents thousands of air marshals nationwide. And this is the quote, two air marshals were pulled off a high risk flight so Maxine Waters aircraft could have six armed agents. And this comes to us from Sonia Hightower Labasco, who's uh, not only a retired uh, federal air marshal herself, but uh, executive director of the Air Marshal National Council. Uh, she said that ad she added that the two additional arm agents met the congresswoman on the ground. So it was an escort. Um, federal air marshals are federal law enforcement uh, personnel. They're, 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 they're federal law enforcement uh, whose uh, primary function is to protect commercial flights. Now, you may recall that that program was beefed up significantly after 9-11. And they, what they do or designed is to uh, deter and uh, and countering uh, and counter risk associated with air travel um, and terrorist activity, piracy and other criminal activities. Um, however, and it isn't just um, air travel. I think they can. It's all over. They can be on buses and planes. I mean trains as well. Uh, but last year, so this isn't just Maxine Waters. This isn't just the Maxine Waters scandal. Congress had was given access to the Air Marshal Protection System um, under a VIP program. And uh, so they get uh, extra protection, even though, as we see with Maxine Waters, they have the Capitol Hill Police and the Secret Service that provide additional protection where need be. And the problem is that what happens is when well, there's limited resources, so they have sensitive flights that presumably they have to cover, I mean, think of a flight between Washington and New York or an overseas flight to a sensitive destination where their security may not be as strong on one end and they want to be sure the flight is going to be subject to hijacking or they get intelligence that the flight's being monitored or, or potentially threatened. So they want someone on the plane just in case. But those people aren't on those planes because they're protecting Maxine Waters or another member of Congress. According to a whistleblower complaint, the program has left a glaring hole in America's aviation security. Recently, the Federal Air Marshal Service has assigned a full-time position at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. to take requests from congressional members for federal air marshal coverage of flights these congressional members are on. So they're now taking, mem uh, according to this complaint, they're taking federal air marshals off of flights 
that need protection to provide extra security to members of Congress. Now, I think members of Congress don't have enough security, right? I, I don't think they have enough security. I don't believe, and I don't like the fencing around the Capitol. It doesn't mean the Capitol has enough security either in terms of being secure enough. This doesn't mean they decimate a law enforcement agency that has a specific mission to patch a hole for security issues related to another branch of government. And, 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 the, and the whistleblower complaint specifically cites this Waters request for extra security. Now, of course, the irony is that Maxine Waters and other leftists uh, are always talking about defunding the police. They're um, like largely against the Second Amendment, but they benefit from this armed security and expert security um, provided by federal law enforcement. It's again, it's rules for thee and not for me when you're a member of Congress. And the added irony is she went and interfered with a trial of a law enforcement officer, raising questions about whether the trial was fair or not and the outcome was fair or not. Now we filed a Freedom of Information Act request with DHS for documents associated with the Delta Airlines flight that she took from the, which she took the flight from Dulles here in Washington, D.C. Dulles is a uh, airport just about 20 miles outside uh, Washington, D.C. to the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. In the, in the records request, uh, we were direct. We said that the Waters request raised the potential, that Waters raised the potential for violence, directed lawlessness, and may have interfered with a co-equal branch of government. Furthermore, Judicial Watch points out that it's still not known what authorized official government business the Congresswoman who represents Los Angeles in the House was attending to in Minnesota. And we highlighted the fact that her appearance tended to be, seemed to be for personal gain. So it wasn't government business she was on that we're concerned about. And as the former federal air marshal, Ms. Hightower Lubosko said, and she was an air marshal, she's a former police officer and then was an air marshal for 12 years. How do you go out and promote defunding the police then call for more police protection yourself personally? So Judicial Watch has a pending ethics complaint against, as I said, Maxine Waters over her uh, calls for incitement, her incitement for violence that a judge called in for, um, uh, abhorrent. Remember, she said that she called protesters to get more confrontational if the jury did not convict Chauvin. We got to stay on the street. We got to get more active. We got to get more confrontational. We got to make sure they know that we mean business. How do you interpret that? And she did that while having security, at least in terms of getting there, provided by your tax dollars. Again, I'm not suggesting she doesn't need security protection. I'm suggesting is that abusing the federal air marshal to shepherd congressmen around to go around in circumstances like this is something we want more information on. And it was thanks to Judicial Watch that this has been uncovered. And I encourage you to go to our website, read more about it, and share it. The media doesn't want to talk about this stuff, right? They want to talk about Matt Gates. They want to talk about Marshall Taylor Green. They want to talk about all the terrible conservatives in Washington, D.C., right? But they don't want to talk about the kind of the arrogance and lawlessness of government officials who abuse their positions to advance a personal agenda. And uh, so Judicial Watch is the information. You can read it yourself, and I encourage you to share it. And this is why, again, I love Judicial Watch. So we, we do the FOIA. We do basic investigative journalism that much of the big media just simply refuses to do or suppresses because it's politically inconvenient. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.